Hi, I'm Eddie Brochen. This week we're in Southern Indiana and we're learning to fly. Be sure to stay tuned for this truly unique fly fishing experience. massive strike. Uh, there comes a time in a man's life when he just wants to fish. Don't want to have to rig 20, 30 lines, you know, go gather bait all day long, cast the net. When you just want to come out, get the old fly rod out, and just go and fish. another little one. Looks like a little bluegill this time or something. There's just another little bluegill. All right, I'm switching to a little black spider. I'm just gonna do a little simple cinch knot. Wet it down a little bit there so not to heat up my knot. There we go. Trim it off a little bit and let's see if the black will work a little bit better. What do we got? Shine it down the water. Come on up. A little bit nicer bass. Hitting those little uh, rubber spiders I've been using. Real nice, healthy, pretty fish. But he's a young one. We'll uh, come back in about four or five years, try to catch him. Is this getting shallow up in here? Doesn't look like it yet. A little drop off up here. This will be. Huh. That's a nice fish. That's not bad. Nice fish. Another small bass. Yeah. That's all right. There you go. Some fly tied. Looks like a spoon. Always experimenting with different things. It's part of fly tying. Having fun doing stuff. Huh. Got a fish? Oh, huh. there you go. <laughs> yep. You gotta go down a little bit. I go down a little bit. And that little bass. Yeah. yeah. Got the little, I went to a streamer type fly. Little streamer type fly here. Kind of same, similar to the popper we were using. And went down deeper, it's got lead eyes and same orange and green color schemes that we're using, but it went down deep. And I was just dragging the water while we were moving the boat and picked up a little bitty one. So maybe we can get a couple of bigger ones now. <laughs>
black and white spinner and minner. There you go. That's a little bit bigger. Yeah, it didn't look very fat for this time of year. on a little rubber spider fishing for bluegills and as long as it's staying down it's probably a catfish I think a bass would have hit the surface by now got him oh yeah there's kind of a drop off right here isn't yeah. There? yeah yeah you can see it just what is, is that a bass or is that a crappie I don't know how I'm going to get him into the boat. I wasn't planning on this. I don't even have a net. I'm going to take a look. We got our first little crappie. <laughs> paper mouth. Yeah, a little paper mouth. They said you can't catch crappies on fly rods, right? <laughs> it's a nice fish. Oh, he's making another run. Oh, we'll have to hang off the side here. Because I don't have a net, so we're going to try to land him by hand if I can ever wear him out. Is that a bass? No. Is that a crappie? Oh, no, it's a sunfish, isn't it? Nice one. That's a sunny. Nice one. Nice size. Oh, yeah. 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 Got a really nice, nice fat little sunfish that we got. Came in from the bottom pretty good on this one. They swallowed her pretty good, too. Though. Well, this is going to take a while. So uh, let's take time now and uh, visit the Fly Masters for the tip of the week. Hi, I'm Derek Filkins, and this is Flymaster's Tip of the Week. Today we're fishing in Indiana. The reason that we're doing that is because it's a great place to fish. Lots of lakes and streams here in Indiana to enjoy fishing and to catch some very nice fish. Now today we haven't caught huge fish. First Most of our fish there. have been smaller. Right and he's a monster. But one of the things that we've been practicing today is just the art of fishing itself. How do you expect to ever get better at fishing if you don't go fishing. We spend several weeks a year fishing in other localities, but our most important location is where we fish here at home because it's our opportunity to practice our skills so that we do spend a lot of money to go somewhere on a trip. We know what we're doing. We're fishing out of a drift boat today. The reason we do that is you have to get used to having somebody else in the boat when you're fishing. Sometimes when we back cast, we get hung up with each other. That's just part of fishing. It helps us to learn to be aware of having other people in the boat. Now, important fishing skill that we've been practicing today and learning is the fact that we always need to stay tight on our fly. We cannot always anticipate when a fish is going to bite. If we have slack in our line, if we're not tight on our fly, the fish bites, we lift our rod, we strip our line, and all we've done is taken up our slack instead of embedding the hook in the fish. So it's very important. Stay tight on your fly, keep your rod tip down, and keep your line straight to your fly. So three things. First, we want to fish here in Indiana, and we want to fish often so we practice our skills. We want to fish out of a boat with somebody else so that we get used to doing that, so that when we go on a great trip someplace, we know what we're doing. And third, always stay tight on your fly. Don't have any slack in your system, or you won't be able to hook the fish. And that's our tip of the week. All right, welcome back. We've still got a nice one on here. I'm pretty sure it's a catfish. It's been staying down the whole time, but what an experience, guys. Looks like a big channel cat on a fly rod. Haven't had a chance to see him. It's been about 15, 20 minutes yet. I don't know how big he is, if he's 
five pounds, 10 pounds, I have no earthly idea. Like I'm starting to see something now. I think I can see him. Let me see if I can get him over here. I think he's catfish. Is he fishing for catfish? He might be. See, there he is, there he is. He's coming up for the first time, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, looks like a pretty nice channel cat. There he is right there. Let's see if we can get him to circle back. Come on, come on, he's about ready. He's about ready, he's about ready. I'm gonna try to grab him. Oh, he's gonna go back this way, he's gonna go back this way. He's going this way, he's going this way. Let me see if I can get him in. Remember, I've got this guy on, you know, four pound tippet here with a, a little bitty bluegill spider. And I'm all out of line here, so the rest is all monofilament. Oh, shoot, I gotta keep him away from the boat. Just keep him away from the boat. Here he is, here he is, here he is. He's still got a lot of fight to him. That's one thing about these, these catfish, boy. They're pound for pound, they're quite a bargain. I gotta be very gentle. We don't wanna lose him here. We don't wanna lose him, we don't wanna lose him. Okay, he's almost. He's almost ready. Here, let me turn him around. Let me turn him around, see if I can get him by the, by the tail or the, oh, this is gonna be hard, folks. But I think I can do it. I think I can get him right here. He's about ready. He's about ready, come on. Come on back, come on back, come on back, come on back. I got him. Woohoo! All right. What a battle, guys. But here he is, finally. Mr. Whiskers, ah, Mr. Whiskers on a fly. Looks like about a... Oh. I was expecting to catch bluegills in the uh, uh, crappie today, but uh, Everybody knows me for catfish, so there you have it. Another cat, this time on the fly. Now let's take time and see what uh, Derek and John are doing. I bet we've got more pounds here than they've caught all day with their fish. Let's put him back. I got a little bluegill or something. Nice, nice bluegill in here. Uh, still a black and white spinner minner. Oh, there. oh, did you see him take that one? Oh, no, I, I just looked up. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, you get the orange one on there. Yeah. Good. Oh, did you I get one too? bass back here, yeah. Me too bad. Got the little bluegill. Kind of right off that little mossy place up there. I think we got, guys, I've got something big on this time and I'm all the way down to my thread. Uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to turn on the boat and chase it down. We have to turn on the boat and chase it down. Oh boy. I knew right away I'd hooked a big fish. It just started taking all the float line out. And the only thing remaining was the white thread at the end and uh, I made a beginner's mistake by trying to catch up to the fish. Oh, shoot. I hope he's still there when I'm all done with this mess, because I made a, uh, trying to start the boat and don't have any help. My rod tip's all messed up and uh, this is going to be a disaster. Is he got a fish on? Hopefully he's still on here. See this? Uh, it's already down to the, looks like thread. He's been running so much drag on me. And there, I got it, I got it. We may be back on now. Oh, I did it again. I guess that's why you don't bounce the rod tip when you're down to the thread. He's got a fish on or if he's talking to himself. We're still not doing very well. 
I'd be like, boy, Eddie, we got a lot of work to do, is what he's gonna be telling me. This high stick. Let's try to bring him in this way. Let's try to bring him in. I think he's still on. I feel him, I think he's still on. He's still on, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming. Broke the rod tip off? That's not a good sign. What rod did you give him? DL5. Oh, right. Running the line. Here he is, he's coming up, but I won't get that off there. There he is, there he is, there he is. He's coming up, folks. He's coming up. He's looks like to be about another five, six pounder. And real good looking too. Okay. Oh. Let me try to get Come on, come on up. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He's coming in. He's coming. He's coming in. Oh no, he broke the line. He broke the line, ladies and gentlemen. That's what happens. Man, what yeah. I apologize about that. I set the hook and it was like snap. And then he ran all the line out, all the way down to the thread, okay? Yeah, well then you let him go. See, so you're supposed to let him go. You're supposed to just let him go? Just keep letting him go. Even down to the thread? Yeah, till you're out of string, don't worry about it. Well, John wanted to know what all the commotion was, and I explained to him I've been hooking channel cats. I've been seeing them feeding in the shallows underneath this tree. So after he saw what I, the mess I made, he asked me where the secret spot was, and I told him. And he spent uh, several hours just casting up in that same spot, trying to hit that fish, so he could show everybody what to do when you hook a big fish. I got him on the reel here, Ed. You just wanna, he's gonna run for a while. And you wanna keep the reel rod down, because the strength of the rod is right in here. I can pull this fish. That's a little bitty catfish, I think. Let's see. Well, maybe not so little. But we're not going to be in a big hurry to get him in. Now, we can do this the right way or Eddie's way. But Well, point the rod straight up in the air. And That's the way to do it. And bust the tip off <laughs> Eddie's way. <laughs> we got lots of rods. Yeah. Here he comes. There's my, see? There's the fish. Oh, it's a nice cast fish. Yeah. Ah, catfish are fun. He's done. Bring him over here. Okay. We'll get him in the net. Back him over for you. Here we go. There we go. It's Flymaster's way versus Eddie's way. <laughs> We're gonna have supper tonight. Eddie's eating bologna sandwiches. That's a nice catfish. Eddie's favorite fish. Eddie's fi Eddie the catfish master. Is a Indiana trout in its finest form. <laughs> you ready to go? You ready to swim away? There he goes. Perfectly healthy cat. Nice big catfish. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Learning to Fly. Be sure to stay tuned next week for another exciting episode. Until then, God bless you all. <laughs>